Test one. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is this too loud? No? It is? Okay, perfect. I, just, I can hear it sounds a little loud, but um, we're good. So, uh, well, first off, yeah, good morning. Um, I'm glad uh, all of you could join us here today. Uh, I, I really want to thank uh, uh, Chelsea for putting this together. She's the one that kind of made some of this happen. We're, we're doing it in two different shifts here today uh, because of classes and, and whatnot. So um, if we want to give Chelsea a quick round of applause for, for making this happen, that'd be great. Outstanding. Well, very good. So uh, a couple things about me. Um, is that still a little too loud? Is it? No? Feedback, yeah. No, you're fine. Not too bad? Okay. Um, well, there's a video, too, that I want to show, and I don't think that has anything to do with that, but um, we'll work through it. So a uh, couple quick things um, before we <laughs> get moving here. Uh, 13 years ago, I was in the same shoes that you guys were in. Okay, I was not sitting in these chairs. This building wasn't here yet, but... Um, I walk the hallways, right? I, I, I've, I've been to class here, uh, experienced uh, a lot over the last uh, 13 years, and, and that's kind of what I'm going to do with you here today. I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of a journey. Uh, and through that journey, we're going to talk about uh, one of the topics that means a lot to me, I'm passionate about. It's leadership, right? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about leadership and why leadership matters. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the leadership piece and, and the fact that you're all leaders. Some of you may not think you're a leader, but we're going to dive into that and talk a little bit um, as far as how that, that uh, all works together. So, sorry about that. Um, okay, we got, we're good. We're good. Uh, so, again, I, I, I'm going to talk with you a little bit about the leadership piece. We're going to go into uh, a couple different areas within leadership. And uh, I, I hope uh, when we're done talking today and, and we, we get through this, um, I'd be more than happy to, to answer any questions that you guys have uh, or, or provide some insight on some things that you're, you're maybe facing. So we'll, uh, we'll jump right into it. But uh, before we do, <clears throat> um, I want to make uh, one point here that when I, when I graduated from Southeast Tech, I had a degree in criminal justice. I, I graduated with a program. It was, I believe I was, well, I know for sure I was a second class to go through. So it was a, a very brand new program. Uh, and it gave us the opportunity what, to, to once we graduate, to complete uh, what we call a reciprocity exam, and, and basically allows. Or is anybody in here in the law enforcement? Okay, perfect. Two of them. Um, so you're able to complete the reciprocity exam, and it cuts off uh, at that time. It shaved off. I want to say 12 weeks of the academy, and I think it's maybe changed a little bit now. But uh, so it's it really enticing to to do that, right? To to get the uh, the degree, and then also not have to go out to peer for 13 weeks, because who wants to go to peer? <laughs> Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about my journey through law enforcement and how that's uh, positioned me now to be the president and CEO of a company called Fresh Talent. Uh, we're a human capital management agency, and uh, we help organizations understand their people. So, uh, so w one thing that I, I want to point out here quick is um, this phrase, I've, I've heard that before, because everything I'm going to share with you here today is likely something that you've heard before. And in fact, I know you've heard it before, uh, but the, those are the most dangerous words on the planet. I've heard that before. Because think about it, when, when somebody tells you something, what do you usually say if, if you've heard that before? Ah, yeah, I've, I've heard that. That's, you know, especially comes from our parents <laughs> growing up. Oh, I've heard that before. I, you know, why, why are you sharing that with me? So the biggest gap in most of our lives is the difference between what we know and what we actually do. And, and that looks something like this. I, if, you, uh, if, if, if you got a test on Friday, right, a test coming up on Friday, and if you don't study for the test, what happens? Typically, we probably don't score as well as we probably should have. Now, there's probably some of you, uh, I'm not one of them, that I didn't have to ever study because they, they just naturally get the, the material, right, the content, and, they, and then they're able to go in and, and get a test uh, score that is better than mine if I spent 10 hours studying, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is, we know that if we study, we take time to, to, to dive into the content that we have and what we're learning, chances are we're going to have a better score on the test, right? Uh, let me put it to you this way, too. So if you look at the, 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 the difference between what we know and what we actually do, um, have, you, uh, have you guys, let's look at Nike's logo, right? Just do it, right? What if Nike's logo was, just didn't do it? <laughs> 
If their logo was just didn't do it, do you think they would have the, the brand loyalty? Do you think they'd have the recognition of everything that they had? Of course not. Why would they, right? They're, they're not going to promote anything positive if they said, oh, I just didn't do it today, <laughs> right? It's, it's pretty simple, but uh, it's, it's all in the, in the power of, of having uh, the ability to take what you know and put it into action because it all comes back to you. If you want to you get somewhere in life, it's not going to be based on somebody else just giving you information, right? That's a, that's a precursor. That, they're going to give you information, but it's what you do with the information. It's what you put into action is really what's going to make that difference. Next thing I want to talk to you a little bit about here today is what we refer to as growth gap traps. Now, growth gap traps, there's several of them, by the way. There, there's, there's multiple go, growth gap traps uh, and I'm only going to cover a couple of them with you here today. Uh, but really, when, you, when I start to talk about these, I would encourage you uh, to think about situations in your life. Even if it's today, if it was a month ago, if it was a year ago, think about what you did. If, did you take action? Is there something that you did to, to change your circumstances uh, so you don't fall into some of these growth gap traps? And, and I'll be honest, I still fall into these sometimes. And not, not all of them but some of them because I, I've raised my level of awareness. And you'll hear me talk about intentional and awareness today. Uh, but it, it all kind of culminates. It comes back to, to one key point here, and it's about you, right? So the first one is the assumption gap. The assumption gap says that I'll learn how to lead when I get to the position. Okay? When I get the position, that's when I'm going to start to learn how to become a leader. I'll tell you one thing. If you, if you wait... To, to learn how to lead when you get the position, you've missed the opportunity. It's, it's, it's going to be far beyond you. In fact, the Bruce Springsteen, you probably, some of you probably know, he, he has a quote actually, and it's, it says, a time comes when you need to stop waiting for the man you want to become and start being the man you want to be, right? The assumption gap is one of, uh, I believe it's nine. There's nine growth gap traps that we fall into. So once you leave Southeast Tech here and you, you have your formal education, you get out into the world and you start working, there's nobody that's going to help you get to where you want to go more than yourself, right? It all comes back to you. If you don't take the opportunity to learn how to become a better leader, if you don't learn how to take, uh, or you don't take the opportunity to learn how to become a, a better husband, a better wife, a bro better brother or sister, it it's all comes, comes back to one thing. It's communication. It's connecting with people. And, and if, you, if you have this assumption gap, like, oh, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll just figure it out when I get there. You're going to fall into a, a deep, dark place that you certainly don't want to, uh, to end up in. But um, my mom always used to say, uh, there's a quote directly from her, but she, um, okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss something there. But yeah, her, her quote always said, if you, want to world, if you want the world to come to you, you're going to die of boredom. If you think about that, if you let the world always come to you, if you, if you don't take action and get out there and do something, nothing's going to happen, right? You're going to be bored. You're, you're going to fall into this deep hole, again, that, that you're going to say, well, why, is this, why are all these bad things happening to me? Wh wh what am I doing wrong? It's because you assume, right? We assume that we're going to grow. We're assume, and, and, and I'll get into growth and what that looks like and what that means, but when you look at the assumption gap, if you don't take the action and do it yourself, Chances are you're not going to get to where you want to go. Next one is the knowledge gap. I don't know how to become a leader. Okay, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are probably sitting here wondering what that looks like. You know, how do I become a leader? And here's the thing: most of the people that that I talk to, they don't believe they're leaders because they don't have a title or a position. And because they don't have a title or position, they that they they tell themselves that I'm not a leader. We define leadership like this. Leadership is influence. It's nothing more, nothing less. It's influencing others. And, and actually, really, when you peel it back, leadership is about people. It's not about a, a position or a title. So, so when, you, when you start to dive deep into leadership, it's really, w once you get there, it's really not that deep, right? It's, well, it's, I, I need to learn how to influence people. That's one of the most important skills that you can actually master, is, is influence. How do you influence people? And we're going to get into some, some influencing situations here in a little bit. But again, the, the knowledge gap, we, we tell ourselves, well, I don't know how to become a better leader.
There we go. Okay, the comparison gap. So I'm not a, a, as good a leader as, as she is or he is. We, we fall into this, this comparison gap where we're always telling ourselves, right? We, we, my partner and I, we refer to this as the BS system. It's the belief system, okay? It's not the other BS, but the, the BS system is your belief system. When you start to tell yourself, oh, I'm just, I'm never going to be as good as that person. I'm never, I'm never going to be able to be as successful as that individual. I'll tell you this right now. Were any of you here when Mike Rocho was here this year? Or I guess it was in earlier this year, I believe. March, I think. Was it last year? I can't, yeah, it's crazy. So but you, were you guys here at all? Nobody here? So I sat in the same room, and actually it's somewhere up here, uh, in Mike Rowe. I, I love Mike Rowe. Uh, outstanding individual. He's doing great things, especially for schools like this. And I, I sat up there, and I thought, I want to be that guy. I want to be in his shoes. I want to... I want to walk around, I want to talk to people about some things that I've experienced that hopefully kind of sheds light on somebody else's life. So I, I didn't have the comparison gap, right? Oh, he, well, of course he's a significantly better speaker than I am, but he's done a lot, right? He's experienced a lot. And, and the one thing with leadership, you have to understand that leadership is not just something that you just pick up a book and you can read and learn how to become a better leader. It's not possible. It may give you some insight, but what leadership takes is it takes action. It takes experience. Uh, look at it this way. How many of you, if you walked into class today and your instructor was a 17-year-old high school kid, what would you say? Why is he here? Well, he's just teaching the class. He read a book, right? He, he knows what he's talking about. No, all, all of your instructors have hands-on experience, right? They, they've been in the field. They've, they've done, they've you know, walked the walk. They've talked the talk. They've been there. They've done that. And that's what leadership comes down to. So the way to start building your leadership is start eliminating these growth gap traps. And if you want more of these growth gap traps, there's a book that's written by John Maxwell. It's called The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. I encourage you to buy it. It's a very, very good book. And he lists these growth gap traps in there. They're very good. All right, so this sets the stage for this uh, quick little video. So I want to share a story with you quick. It was um, March 21st, 2008. Now, I, I graduated, just to kind of put some time frame here, I graduated from Southeast in 2006. This was two years later, a little over two years later, and I was on patrol. I was working for the Lincoln County Sheriff's Department. If you don't know where that's at, it's just, it's basically Southern Sioux Falls all the way down to Beersford. And I was on patrol, and that night uh, in particular, I was up on 57th Street and like Marion Road at the time, and a call came in. Another deputy was, came on the radio frantically. He was screaming that, that he needed help. He said, I, my car was just rammed by another person, and now I'm in pursuit. I'm heading southbound. I'm, I'm pursuing a red Honda Civic. Now, a couple things about law enforcement, and, and you guys will, will get there at some point in time. Maybe you've experienced some of this already, but when something like that comes across the radio, if you've never felt what adrenaline feels like, it's like an, it's an adrenaline high. It's, it, you literally, you hear that. First off, you're like, okay, what's going on? That You have this emotions, right? Emotions run through your body. What's going on? Where is he at? And what's, what's, uh, how can I help him out? How can I get there? So this, this took place, uh, high, if, you, if anybody is familiar with Sioux Falls, Highway 11 and 57th Street is like the extreme southeast of Sioux Falls. This happened just a little bit south of there. So I was several miles away, almost 10 actually, if I think if I do the math right, but about 10 miles northwest of where, where this took place. So I knew as soon as that came out, I, had, I, I, I thought in my brain, okay, here I am. What's going to be the fastest route that I'm going to get to? Now, now, mind you, speeds during this pursuit were in excess of 120 miles an hour. Okay, so there was high speeds. They were taking corners. There's the, the, what they call the S-curves just south of Sioux Falls or Lake Alvin that uh, you can't go faster than 45 or 50 miles an hour without losing control. So uh, w while we walk through this video, I, I'm gonna, I'll pause it a few times because I want to point out a couple of things. But as you listen to this, just listen to the audio. Listen to the, uh, not only myself, but the, the pursuing deputy and then the other units that were involved in this pursuit. And, and just, I just want you to listen. And again, I'm, I'm going to stop it a few times uh, as we go through it. So... Now we're stopped by 135, approaching 
Okay, real quick, you're probably wondering why, why, why did I shut my siren off? Why did I pull over to the road here? They were two miles north of me. So I made some significant ground coming south and east. And now I'm two miles south of their location. Okay, so as you watch the time on this too, you'll see how fast that two mile gap is, is closed. And after this too, I, I'll show you something. I'll stop it again and, and we can uh, talk a little bit more about that. But that's why I'm stopping, just so you know. And, and you're going to see me here in a second and, and know why I stopped. Mission 3-4, also we're not at, it looks like they're coming in there pretty hot. 4-4, two hours. Go ahead. Set it to you on 135. Uh, Adam Paul, so are you on the air door for your state? That's me. I'm running out. I've got spike strips in my hand. Okay? I'm running out. I, he asked if I was in position, and somebody got on the radio at the same time I did, so he didn't hear me. But as you see, I'm sitting there. It's got this long cord. I'm trying to unwind the cord to, to get back down in the ditch. So he just said he's in the other lane, so get him over there. And I just said 10-4. So watch, watch here now. So that was a red car. <laughs> Hard to see, right? So I was down in the ditch. I was holding this big long plastic piece that has the rope that's a tied to the spike strip and I'm standing down in the ditch and, and I heard him as, and he saw my vehicle you can't see it in, in, in or he can't hear it and he can't see it but as soon as he saw my lights when he was about a mile away I heard him accelerate extremely fast I just heard his engine accelerate really fast and I was standing down there I was just waiting for him to come and as soon as he hit those strips my arms just jank, yanked up in the air because it, 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 it pulled from so much force. It, 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 I hit all four tires, by the way. <laughs> so I knew he wasn't going to go anywhere after that point. But a, as soon as it, it, he hit, it yanked the, the cord almost out of my hand. And thankfully, there was a, uh, a Game Fish and Parks guy that, that saw me. I, I blew his doors off trying to get to where, where this was going on. So he started following me and, and pulled up behind me and and what you'll see is I jump back in my car here in a second, but he told me, he's like, just go, I'll get your spikes, just go. All right, so I, I, at that point, I yanked the spikes off the road so I didn't run them over. And just so you know, too, the, the, I sped this up a little bit because it takes a little bit before, so you'll, you'll watch the rest of the video. If you see Bill right there, he's yelling at the guy. <laughs> not very happy. Um, not very happy at all. All right. So a couple things with this video. Um, there, the, the one thing is this, this pursuit lasted about eight minutes, which eight minutes is eternity, okay, especially when you're adrenaline is pumping, you don't know what's going on, uh, you, 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 you've hear, heard of tunnel vision. Tunnel vision kicks in in situations like this because you, you're trying to focus in on something and your adrenaline is pumping so much that you've got so much going on. And, and any time that I've had somebody that's ridden along with me in my patrol car, they say to me every time, how do you, how do you comprehend? How, how can you look at your computer screen? How can you listen to the radio? We, and we had two radios at the time. How could you listen to all that traffic and, and, and understand where everything was going? And, and, and again, it's all, it all comes back to just repetition, right? You've got to keep doing something over and over. So uh, ultimately, he obviously went to jail. Uh, one thing um, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about is the, the influence piece. Um, and, and what you didn't see is the other dash cam video from the other uh, deputy that, was, that started the pursuit that he ran into. Um, I don't have that video, but I remember watching it. And... 
he pulled up, and this red Honda just smashed right in the front of his patrol car, ran right in the front of it. And after I spiked all four tires, and his vehicle started to slow down because he couldn't go any further, he was on a cell phone. He was talking to somebody. And, and obviously, I didn't know that until after the fact. But uh, once I got him into the patrol car, I, I, I was asking him some questions. I said, why did you ram this other deputy? And he said, well, I rammed him because I didn't want my friends to get in trouble for street racing. Pretty ridiculous, right? I mean, it's, it, to, 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 to put so many lives in danger and to put other deputies in danger and, and th- just the whole the situation itself to, to run from the police because he made a decision, right? His, his decision to influence was negative. It wasn't a positive way, right? <laughs> Clearly. Uh, not, for, for many reasons. But he chose to influence his friends in a negative way. And by the way, when he was on the phone, what I later found out was that he was talking to one of his buddies and said that, I'm going to jail. They, they, they spiked my tires and I'm going to jail. <laughs> um, so there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of situations, a lot of um, pursuits that I've been into. This is only one of, of many. Um, and, and I enjoy talking about them because they, 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 they bring back some memories. Um, some good, some bad. Uh, there's, there's n- nothing ever good comes from a, a pursuit, right? And, and that's where a lot, a lot of agencies, now they're, they're going away from pursuits and, and whatnot. So um, again, this is basically a, a, a very extreme uh, a way to influence, right? And, and uh, sh- share the story with you guys. Uh, but one question I have for you is when you, when you start to look at influencing people, there, there's, there's two ways, right? You have a positive way and you have a negative way. In every situation that you have, it's, you have the ability to determine if it's going to be a positive influence or going to be a negative influence, right? So it, it can be the littlest things that, that we look at and, and how we influence people. Because believe it or not, you guys influence people right now. You guys are influencing people right now. Even sitting here, you have people that look up to you. You could have a, a brother or a sister. You could have a significant other, right? Some, somebody looks up to you. They, they follow your voice. They follow your words. They, they follow your actions, right? So what you do, how you say things, they follow you. It's all influence. It's how, it's how you influence them. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so the other piece, too, that I want to talk to you a little bit about is, is when, when we start looking at influence, there's actually a study that was conducted here um, about 10 years ago. Well, about eight years ago, I'm sorry. Um, and the study uh, went out and, and looked at how many people, one person in, in an average lifetime, can influence somebody. And the study came back. It's, it's, it's astonishing. It, the average person in a, in a lifetime will, will influence 10,000 people. 10,000 people they will unintentionally influence. And that even applies to the, the, the introverts, you know, the shy people. Because if you think about it, those that are in, in sales or, or those that are, that are in uh, political positions, they influence way more than 10,000 people, but they do that intentionally, right? So the, the question is, when you, when you start looking at influencing people and becoming a better leader, right? Because influence is, is leadership, right? So when you start looking at that piece, how are you going to go about doing it? What, what are you going to do to make every interaction a positive interaction versus a negative interaction. And it, when you start to think about it this way, if you, if you were to influence other people intentionally, think about how powerful that could be. Think about how powerful the, a, a position, if, if you walked into work tomorrow, you walked into work and you had a smile on your face and, and, and you greeted everybody, what would that do for, for the, the morale? What would it do for everybody you work around? It's going to make everybody happy, right? They're going to feel, maybe not everybody, but <laughs> most of the people. But if you walk in and, and you're, you're sad and you, and you kind of mope around a little bit, are you influenced in a negative way? Of course, yeah. All right, so now um, I want to talk a little bit about these routine calls, right? And this applies to more than just law enforcement, but... Um, when I went to school here, one of my instructors uh, was Captain Joffer. He was with the Highway Patrol. 
And uh, I remember sitting in class in the health, is it health and human services, I think, the, the class over there in the, in the building, and, and two, two classes in a row, he showed us all these videos, kind of what I showed you there. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is amazing. I can't, I can't wait to put myself in these situations. I, I'm excited about this. And he kept showing us more videos and more videos. Uh, and some of them were, were just silly, you know, people that were drunk and <laughs> the things they were saying and doing. And um, so I, I, I looked at these videos, and, and, but before I got into law enforcement, we had shows like this, CSI. You guys, who's seen CSI? Okay. How about Cops? Anybody watch Cops? Or, or the movie Bad Boys? And, and by the way, Bad Boys for Life is coming out next year, and that's probably going to be a good movie. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> if it's anything like the other ones. But there, there's, a, there's, something, there's a commonality with all these, right? All three of these, they show you what? They show you how glitzy and glamorous those positions are. And, and if, you, if you watch CSI, he's not in that picture there, but who, who remembers Horatio? The guy that put the, just had the most ridiculous lines in the, in the, in the planet. And he, he was the guy that always chased him down and you know, caught the bad guy, right? So th- the thing is that they, they portray this image, right? That, oh, you're going to get into law enforcement and, and you're going to just, every single day that you get into the job, you're just going to be excited and you're going to be chasing bad guys and you're going to be solving crimes. But that's not even close to being true. It's not close to being true. They don't show you the, the, the 350,000 calls a, a year that you get from Steve because the, the neighbor kids are driving his bike through, through their, his yard, you know, or, or when, when Dolores calls and says somebody hit her mailbox for the 15th time. You get those calls and you're like, oh, man, what am I doing here? Like, why, why, why am I working the day shift? This is the worst shift on the planet, right? Because you, you think... Oh, I want to I work in something that's exciting, right? I want to work the night shift because that's where all the fun stuff happens, which most of the time it does. <laughs> but where I'm going with this is when we look at our lives, right? We, we look at when we get up every day, are, are we excited to go to work? Are we excited to go to work? Are we excited to be alive? The answer should be yes, right? So we see other people, right, through, through social media, they're having a better life than we are, right? Because that's one problem with social media is it portrays this image of all the fun things and how, how everybody else has got life just figured out, right? And in, in more so now than, than, you know, back in 2006 when I graduated. I think Facebook was almost, I mean, it was maybe a couple years old at that point. But we look at everybody else and, and see that they have life all figured out. So, Reality. What is reality? When, when we start looking at reality, uh, I, I can tell you this, the, the, the fact that I, I graduated from Southeast Tech, they, they provided me a foundation, right? They provided me a foundation, not only with an education, but a path. They said, okay, if you come to our school and you graduate, you can take the reciprocity. You don't have to go to peer for 12 weeks, which was outstanding. And then it, it, they, they gave me some actionable steps, the things that I can do to continue my career. But that's the, that's the big thing. It was up to me. It was no, nobody else, right? It, it was my decision on how I was going to live that out. So when we start talking about reality, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of jump back to my, my first position. Straight out, straight out of school, I graduated in May. I had to go through another um, study course that they have for the reciprocity exam um, first part of, 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 I think it was, a f- or maybe it was the end of May. I can't remember. It's been so long now, but I passed the test. I went up to Sisseton, South Dakota. That's where I first started. And if you've never been there, you should probably take a little visit. <laughs> maybe not. But um, I started my career up there, and, and I thought I had life all figured out, right? I thought I, was, I just had it made in the shade. But I had to go back to peer. I had, there's two things I had to complete out in peer. I had to complete my firearms qualification through the state, and I had to go through what they call domestic violence training. So that, that was, I think it took, I think it was, f- at that time it was four days. I was, so I went out to peer for four days, and I will never forget this moment. I was, I was sitting in this class, and it's, it's not the normal law enforcement class where they have 25 or 30 officers that are going through the academy. This was 
only reciprocity students. So I was sitting in the class with people from Florida, Michigan, Nebraska, all over, right? So we're sitting there, and, and I'll never forget this moment. The, one of the instructors had said, why don't you guys all look around here? Look around in the room, and there was maybe 20 of us. And he said, when you look around the room, he goes, think of this. Statistically, one of you will likely die in the line of duty. Wow. I wasn't ready for that. I thought, okay. I went to school. <laughs> I was prepared, right? They gave me all these tools. They gave me everything. But I got to this one moment when reality hit me. I thought, we're in South Dakota. Give me a break. Officers die in big cities. Not a chance it's ever going to happen around here, right? Well, little did I know, one of the gentlemen that was sitting at my table, nearly five years later, Officer Ryan McCandless with the Rapid City Police Department, him and Nick Armstrong were both shot and killed. Ryan sat at my table. We had dinner together. We talked about life. He was from Michigan. He was killed. There was three officers that were shot that day. Two had passed away. What's even more ironic with this whole situation, my wife is in law enforcement. She still is today. And Nick Armstrong, the other officer that was shot and killed, was in her academy class. So if you think about reality and when reality sets in and how, how impactful reality is, you don't know it until you get out into it, right? And, and there's, there's things that are going to hit you and you're going to say, well, pfft. Why didn't I prepare for that? Why, why did this happen to me? There's so many circumstances that, that surround us every day in our lives that we oftentimes look at reality and say, it can't happen to me. It's not possible. It's reality. So now I want to talk a little bit to you about defining moments in your life. Now, I'll never forget this. I, was at, uh, I graduated from Roosevelt High School here in Sioux Falls. And we were in the commons one morning, and, and I, walked, I walked in, and all my friends were excited, and, and I, I was like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, we got our ACT scores back. And I'm like, oh, boy. I, I almost turned around and walked the other way. Uh, they're all, it was almost like a competition. Who, who got the highest score and, you know, what was going on with them? And, you know, and then we started talking about, you know, well, hey, I got this scholarship, and I'm going to this college. And, and they said, well, Justin, what'd you get on your ACT? I just paused. I didn't want to tell them because it was nowhere near what they got. So I thought, hmm, how do I respond to this? What do I need to say? One of my friends, Corey, said, well, where are you going to go to school? And I said, I think I'm going to go to Southeast Tech. And they're like, you're dumb. Why are you going to go to Southeast Tech? You're dumb. It's a tech school. You're not going to go to a big university. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a scholarship. I, 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 I didn't fill out any applications for any big universities. It's because I found something that I wanted to do. Law enforcement. I wanted to get into law enforcement. And this was 